So now we're going to analyze using this table over here on the right whether a trade will occur. We already said that firm A might want to sell a permit and firm B might want to buy a permit, but that the reverse transaction w wouldn't, wouldn't be desired by either party. So on the right, the question I'm going to ask is, if A sells a permit to B, are both parties willing? In other words, would A want to sell a, party, a permit to B, and would B want to buy the permit? And we're going to suppose, as we did over on the left, that the price is $24 for a permit. We will analyze the situation of no trade and the situation of a trade. And by trade, I mean A selling the permit to B. So this is the, this is the trade. And C, if trading makes the firms better off. And what I want to prove is that a trade would make both A better off and B better off. So since, since the trade would make both of them better off, we assume that the trade would happen. And then we want to see whether society cares at all. So let's analyze the no trade position first. If there's no trade, then the permit cost, now remember, we're not, we, we're not taking into account the initial allocation of permits. That already happened, that's in the past, those costs are sunk, it, it, doesn't, uh, it doesn't matter anything, it doesn't matter. So if there's no trade, then no money changes hands, and so there's no cost to either A or B, and the sum of zero and zero is zero. So that's the permit cost line. For permit pollution control, I'm sorry, for, for the pollution control cost. Now, the current emissions were five from each firm. And each firm has four permits, each permit permitting one ton of pollution. So now the firms are going to have to reduce pollution from five down to four. In the case of no trade, everything is exactly as I just described. Both firms keep their four permits, and so both firms have to reduce pollution by one ton. As I wrote over here, that costs twenty dollars for firm A and thirty dollars for firm B. So that's the amount of money that they're going to have to pay because of the tradable permit scheme, given that they don't trade any permits. The sum of twenty plus thirty is fifty, so that's a total pollution control cost. And the sum of Permit cost and pollution cost is 20. 0 plus 20 is 20 for A, and 0 plus 30 is 30 for B, and 0 plus 50 is 50 for A plus B. So that's the analysis of the no trade situation. How about if they trade? So the trading question is a question of A selling a permit to B. That's what I mean by trade. Let's first do the permit cost. B has to pay $24 for the permit, so it costs B $24. A receives the $24 from B because this is A selling the permit to B. So A's cost is negative 24 because it's not a cost, it's a benefit. In the third, in the last column, the sum of negative 24 and positive 24 is, of course, zero. So this is just money changing hands from B to A, from B to A. How about the pollution control cost? A started out with f uh, five tons of pollution. Then A had four permits, but now A sold a permit to B, so A only has three permits left. So A was at five tons, 
and now he's got to go to three tons. So he has to reduce pollution by two tons. For A, each ton of pollution reduction costs 20 bucks. And since he has to do two of those, two times 20 is 40. So $40 is the entry under column A for the pollution control cost. How about firm B? So per, firm B started with five tons of pollution, then got four permits, but then bought a permit from A. So after buying the permit from A, B has five permits. That means he doesn't have to pollu reduce pollution at all because he was originally at five tons of pollution. So that's the explanation for the pollution control cost under column B to be zero because firm B doesn't have to reduce pollution at all. The sum of, the, of columns A and B is 40 plus zero, which is, which is 40. So now let's do the sum of the permit cost and the pollution control cost. In other words, the sum of these two is in the last. Bro, well, minus 24 plus 40 is 16. And then in column B, 24 plus 0 is 24. And then A plus B, 0 plus 40 is 40. Okay, so that's where the numbers come from. Now let's get our conclusion. Suppose your firm A. If there's no trade, the sum of your cost is $20. And if there's trade, the sum of your cost is $16. You don't like costs, so 16 is better than 20. So you would choose trade. Now let's look at B. Again, we're going to look at the sum of costs. If there's no trade, then B faces $30 as a sum of cost. But if there's trade, B faces $24 as a sum of cost. B doesn't like cost, so it picks the one that costs it the least. That's 24. So that means that both A and B would prefer the trade over the no trade. That means that the answer to this question, are both parties willing to engage in the trade where A sells one permit to B? That, the answer to that question is yes. Okay, so they are going to want to trade, but we don't really care about trading per se. What economists care about is the last column, is the, the, in particular the sum of the costs for A and B. If there's no trade, the sum of the costs for A and B are fi is 50. And if there's trade, the sum of the costs for A and B is only 40. Therefore, what economists want to happen is trade. Because costs aren't good for the economy either. And so the socially optimal thing to do is to reduce pollution to the socially desired amount at a cost of $40 rather than spending $50 to do exactly the same thing. Now, the no trade situation has both firms having four permits. That's exactly the same as the situation with command and control. So the no trade situation is equivalent to command and control. I'll say it's like command and control. So we can ha this, so this is the comparison. It's like command and control for the for the um, for these columns. I mean for these rows.
the command and control has no permits, so it doesn't have any permit costs, so those are irrelevant. But command and control certainly has pollution control costs. So the pollution control cost under command and control is $50 here. And we also came to that. So this $50 is the same as this $50, the sum of the uh, pollution control costs. Actually, I suppose I should draw it the other way. Um, yeah, let me. Command and control really just has pollution control costs. And so it's this number and this number that's relevant for command and control. Command and control doesn't have permits, so neither the permit cost row nor the sum of the cost row is relevant to command and control. The, the command and control solution has $20 cost for A, which is the same as this over here, 30 for B, which is the same as this over here, so 50 total, which is the same as this over here. So command and control, the bottom line is that for both firms together, the command and control cost is $50, but if you let the firms trade, then you can get the same environmental quality at a cost of $40. So this shows the superiority of tradable permits to command and control. And again, the reason why we have the economic incentive instrument, in this case, the tradable permit, being superior to command and control is because you had, you had diversity of firms. Let me just do some erasing. So the firms are diverse. One of them finds it pretty cheap, only, only $20 a ton to control pollution. The other finds it expensive, $30 a ton to control pollution. If you engage in, if you choose to do command and control, they both have to do exactly the same thing. So they both have to reduce pollution by one ton. And you're going to end up with society seeing a $50 pollution control cost. Whereas if you allow tradable permits, there's some flexibility in the system. So you can end up with, instead of, instead of A having four permits and B having four permits, you can engage in this sale so that A ends up with three permits, and B ends up with five permits. And that means B doesn't have to engage in pollution control. And A has to engage in a lot of pollution control. But that's socially optimal because B is the one that finds it expensive to engage in pollution control, and A is the one that finds it cheap to engage in pollution control. So you would want A to engage in more pollution control than B. And with tradable permits, that's exactly what you get. So this shows the superiority of tradable permits over command and control. Now, by the way, one question you might wonder, would B want to buy even more permits? If it wants to buy, if buying one permit clearly is better for B, and it's also better for A, then how about buying two permits? But that doesn't make any sense because if B buys one permit, that already gets them back to the five permit level they were originally at. So they wouldn't want to, they wouldn't want to buy any more permits than that. So this concludes the explanation of box 13.1. It, it goes, I, I didn't do the, the uh, graph on page 183, but I did do a version of table one on page, on page 184.